Hello and welcome to Steve Knows. Today we're talking about PC gaming and PC VR gaming native on the Quest. We have free Steam eye tracking, foveated rendering, the Quest 4, feature updates, new games and more. Also an FYI, you can save 20% on all Quest games on the Meta Store using code Steve Knows. 20% is an awesome discount, there's no catch, just use the code and you can save some money you can put towards something else. I've also put a game key for Deadpool in this video and I've broken it up into sections. A few characters may be missing to give everyone a chance, so there is a little bit of a treasure hunt, I shall say, if you're interested in winning Deadpool. So I think that is enough chinwagging, let's get started. So I did a recent video showing off the Quest running a PC VR mod of Halo Combat Evolved natively on our Quest headset. The reason this being exciting is the Steam Frame's unique selling point was the ability to run PC VR titles and flat screen titles native on that headset. So I was curious, can the Quest do this even in a roundabout way? So recent advancements to WinLater XR has meant they have enabled a new API to be leveraged that would mean PC VR titles can run on your Quest headset natively. One of the people involved said to me that it would cost too much resources to emulate Steam VR or OpenXR runtime, so we created our own VR runtime, which we're calling WinLater XR API. Halo Combat Evolved is still a PC VR mod, but it's using our own runtime to enable this. So the tester game, as was just mentioned, was Halo CE. You do need to own the original Gearbox version of the game to enjoy the full experience, not just the demo that they have available that you can try this out with. The current caveat this, bear in mind, this is the first breakthrough to enable this kind of play is it's currently using mono rendering. Although it has motion controls and head tracking, you don't get that true stereoscopic vision. But they have told me they are working on exactly that. So I'm excited to see what else could be possible. What can they enable so Quest users don't miss out on what the Steam frame can deliver? You can even enjoy flat screen titles with this tool because it runs a virtual machine running the Windows operating system on your headset. So you can install and play flat screen PC titles this way. There is a Reddit of games that people have tried and tested, although there is more, but you can see there are impressive titles here. Games like GTA 5, Alien Isolation, Bioshock Infinite, No Man's Sky, Halo 2. You can even install Steam, 7-Zip and WinRAR increasing the potential possibilities of games you could put on the headset or download to it. So although this isn't a perfect solution, you should limit your expectations on what the power of the Quest can provide and the expectation that the Steam Frame will run this kind of thing a little bit better due to the SteamOS support and a better chipset. But on Quest, where we were previously not able to do this at all, I think the fact that we have seen unsupported titles running natively on the Quest in VR, as well as the ability to play flat screen titles natively on the Quest. This is a win, and especially as a first iteration of this, it should only get better. Of course, if there's more interest, the devs will spend more time on this and more effort on this. So I will link videos and links to the tools so you can try this out for yourself. Try setting up Halo running that natively on your headset and perhaps No Man's Sky as well. And although this has been around for a while, it seems like the perfect time to make this known. I just thought this was so dang cool. So the next thing is something rather special as well, especially for the Steam Frame and maybe the next Quest headset, which we will talk about more in a bit. Even making good use of the Quest Pro as a PC VR headset. So if you've got one of those, this is a win. It's a free tool for Windows machines that enables eye-tracked foveated rendering, leveraging modern NVIDIA GPUs called Pimax Magical for All. And the reason it says Pimax there is because it's actually replicating something within the Pimax software. So if you own a Pimax headset, you already have this and you don't need to come along on the hype train. So it's going to enable eye tracked foveated rendering on any Steam VR title. The tool can inject the eye tracked rendering into titles that leverage the DirectX 11 graphics API and OpenVR. And yes, this is a deprecated API. So modern titles using the modern tools, this obviously won't work, but games like Half-Life Alex, Skyrim VR, Boneworks, Elite Dangerous, very popular PC VR titles, this is going to work. Hopefully going to give you what looks like a better PC VR experience on hardware that may have been struggling. And to note, this isn't needed if the modern game already supports OpenXR eye tracked foveated rendering. It's just that not many classic titles do, which was why the use of eye tracking for years now hasn't really been the most appealing feature for the cost that you need to invest to get it. But of course, brilliant if you like playing flight sims like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Also helpful with this is the PC VR side of things is combining the Steam Frame's foveated streaming. This could provide better performance and better streaming 
all in one, which is pretty cool. I don't know if there's going to be a bit of a latency delay or some pain, but in theory, this could be pretty cool. So I'll link this down below if you're interested in checking it out. So next, if we follow Meta's usual headset cycle, we would expect a new standalone device in 2026 towards the end of the year. But that doesn't seem to be the case, at least for a Quest, as Meta looked to be focusing on an ultralight puck-powered headset. The previously named Pismo Low and Pismo High, the expected Quest 4 headsets, they have been cancelled, and the two big competitors, Samsung and Apple, have just released puck-based high-end devices. So it makes sense why Meta would kind of focus on going down that route so they can be a competitor and prevent people kind of owning that sector of the market. So this headset puck is expected to be a processing unit as well, making the weight and form factor even smaller on the headset. And I think in the past, people were really funny about the puck. I remember that era. I remember a time. But after having all these heavy headsets, I think the opinion has changed. And this headset is codenamed the Puffin, which we have spoken about before. So if you were someone that was sitting on the fence waiting for the Steam frame because you were waiting to see what meta were going to be dropping soon, it looks like maybe the Quest 4 might be the following year. But it seems very likely this kind of productivity headset is going to support PC VR as well. But I bet it's expensive. So one of the most unique things about the meta platform, its unique experiences, is this new Hyperscape application where you can scan your environment for about 10 minutes and then it will generate a realistic environment based on that scan on a remote server somewhere that takes hours but it spits out a VR environment based upon the real world room and it looks stunning. It's really dang cool. But this has just had an update where you can now invite people to join you via a URL and they can join via a flat screen or via a VR device. This is going to let people share their scapes and have a social aspect within it. So my mind immediately went to things like wedding venues. You can go check out a wedding venue, be able to view it, that space remotely with a real life agent. If you're selling a home, you can go visit and have a tour, maybe even museums and have a tour, especially combining that with codec avatars. That's game changing. Although that's probably a while off, it's possible. So practical uses seem really great, but gaming, Maybe someone can create a game using escaped spaces, and that could be a really cool USP, if it's possible. Okay, let's talk about games now. We've had the interesting tech, now the fun games. And the first one is Ninja Warrior VR. This is a whimsy looking game that is based on the peak human physical condition from the TV show Ninja Warrior. So it's finally coming to Quest. I love this because VR is a physical medium. So this style of play can really only be experienced and should be experienced in VR, my voice went there, excuse me. It takes me back to thinking about Doritos Crash Course and that game was awesome. I almost said fire, but I think I'm too old for that. It hasn't gone for realistic visuals. It has gone for something fun and silly, but fans of the show will recognize the obstacle courses and the stages that you play. They've still kept true to that and it's supporting multiplayer. So four of you can compete against each other from December 18th for just $10, which is around eight pound. So don't expect a game of the year experience, but something that's fun, something you can share the headset with others and play. Next is Veil. At one point, this was the hypest first person shooter in VR. They have just dropped a free to play extraction shooter mode, which is a mode that is loved in VR. I think of games like Ghosts of Tabor. So there is something awesome here for you to play for free. And it's going to be in a title that got a lot of attention on Steam and on Quest. So note this is an early access, so manage your expectations. But they are going to offer you this new game mode where you split off into six teams of three in a brand new location with new mechanics such as a shield and ammo tier system so the gunfire will interact differently with enemies armor depending on your tier and xlab did give upload vr a roadmap image of what's to come with this game mode and there's things like pve pvp trading weapon customization crafting fishing boss fights, skill trees. It looks like it's going to be absolutely packed. And from what I remember playing this a while ago, Veil vale is a polished shooter, so this could be good. And as I said, it's free. It's available right now. So I'll link it down below if you wanted something to play. And speaking of Veil, vale, love a segue. You may be interested in the VR LAN and gaming festival happening in Amsterdam at the H2O eSport campus in 2026. This is April 3rd to April 4th. Veil vale is one of the games that will be played at this event and you can sign up if you have a team to compete in. 
Pavlov is another shooter you can sign up for, and Orion Drift for Zero Gravity Sci-Fi Sport Play. I did attend one of these, funnily enough, when it was in my hometown. I got so lucky that it was here. And it was such a hype event. So much passion, so much fun. The commentators were amazing. The teams were amazing. I, I do recommend it if you're able to go and you're available to go. Clarifying, this isn't sponsored. It is just a good time. And for people that buy tickets, you will receive a free Val game skin. So I'll link the event and the Discord down below if you want to compete, support, spectate, or just get involved in one of the biggest VR esporting weekends around. I have another free experience for you to enjoy. A friend of mine has been developing chapter two of his series, The Obsessive Shadow, a rather creepy VR game that puts you in a world of atmosphere rather than the jump scare that anything could be around this corner. What is that stalking me? And all you're armed with is a video camera and a flashlight. So you are forced to face your fears, overcome your fears. And if you know VR and you know scary games, stuff gets tense. So chapter two is not out yet, but there is a free demo of chapter one and chapter two combined, which I'll link down below in the description if you want something to play on Steam or PlayStation VR 2. Time for the quick fire news now, some nice to knows, and it's some pretty nice to knows. And a lovely segue mentioning the PlayStation VR is the PlayStation VR 2. I cannot believe this. The PS VR 2 is on sale right now for $300, and you can get the bundle of Call of the Mountain, the Horizon World VR experience, as part of that. This sale is on until the 18th of December. So if you own a PS5 already, this is a shockingly good, incredible deal, especially because this headset can also be used as a PC VR title with eye tracking if you buy the adapter for another £50. That is madness. And Thrill of the Fight 2 also leaves early access and includes a single player campaign as part of its full release. So one of the most loved boxing simulators, which was such a success, it was such a great workout, you can now play in the sequel multiplayer. So you can fight people from all over the world. So instead of playing rock, paper, scissors with a friend, just have a, have a punch up, risk free. The game has doubled in price from $10 to $20 for the full release though, just to be aware, but you can save yourself four bucks, four quid by using the code Steve Knows. And finally, what well, another just absolutely shocking discount is, so finally the Quest 3S is at Costco for $200. That is insanely good. And that comes bundled with 12 months of the Horizon Plus subscription. So that's free VR games. You can't compete with that. If you wanted to get in VR or a family member wanted to get in VR, that is the offer to grab. Cost go more like cost whoa. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. I hope there was something here to get you excited for VR. You get to go experiment, get to go save some money. Use the code Steve Knows to save 20% on anything on the Meta Store. And if it's your vibe, hit subscribe. That I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but I love it. And join me for next time. Oh my gosh, it rhymed again. <laughs> but more importantly, have a great week. Happy gaming. Good day.